Yo what's up guys and welcome back to Boundary Break, the series where I get to show you an exclusive look around the outsides of your favourite maps in Rainbow Six Siege. In today's episode we're going to be checking out Clubhouse, Plain and Hereford. If you are new to the channel make sure you subscribe and leave a like and let me know down in the comments which maps you would like to see in the next episode. Without further ado, I hope you enjoy. Now starting off strong with the first map today, Clubhouse, this map has been in the game since the very start. It was the very first map that Ubisoft reworked. A lot of people don't actually realise that Clubhouse had a rework because it's been in the game for so long. It's quite a unique map having the player surrounded on all four sides of the map, surrounded by brick walls. So this is going to be an interesting one to take a look at. Now starting off just outside kennels on the warehouse spawn, this is where we're first going to go outside of the boundaries. As you can see this you will die message coincidentally is the same you will die message that a group of people would have experienced on their own screens back in 1940 in Germany. But I'll let you guys figure that one out. Now if we head down this street just outside of the map, we'll get to this cool little Paul Walker easter egg that Ubisoft have added in tribute of him. Just right there in the middle of the road, yep. Nice one. If we keep heading a little further on, you can see that Ubisoft were clearly trying to design a small German town with the outside of this map. It's quite cool to see the level of detail that they've tried to put into the outside of the map, showing the streets, the houses, all the trees and other buildings. Now this is meant to be set in Hanover in Germany, but how about I hand these nuts over your face? Now heading into the centre of town now, we can get to the church here that I actually spent a lot of time in my childhood with Father Jamal. Now unfortunately, due to a contract that I've signed with Father Jamal, I'm not allowed to talk about any of the activities that went on, but all I can say is there were a lot of other kids downstairs. Now I did spend a lot of time whilst exploring just running through the streets between these houses because it's quite a cool area to explore and it almost acts like a maze with so many different roads and alleyways going in between the houses. It is very cool to see once again the level of detail that Ubisoft have put into the exteriors of their map. Now if we keep running through the houses we can get to the edge of town, or maybe it's Poland, I don't know, I've never been. As we run along a little further we can see that the idiot from Up's house is here but this time he forgot his balloons. What a fucking moron, I'm glad his wife died. Now as usual I wanted to see how far off the map I could go before I died and I went quite far until I reached the border of France and at that point my soul immediately surrendered itself to the devil and I died. Back over to the map once again and if we head out the back of the shipping dock spawn we can get over to this quite large bridge. It's quite cool, a very large structure, one of the largest structures I've seen on the edge of a map and it adds a nice little bit of background once you're inside the map actually playing the game normally but I mean who would do that? If we keep heading onwards once again through the houses that build up the town, we can get to the edge of the town almost like this swamp area with lots of trees on a row behind us. Now before I ventured out into the great beyond, I realised that now since Pride Month is over, I wanted to quickly head back into town and commit a few hate crimes. After I had finished, I headed out past the trees in order to explore a little further. Now there isn't too much to say about this part of the map, just lots of green and lots of trees, but I kept on pushing to see what was on the other side. As I was swallowed up by the ground, I saw on the edge of the skybox this almost panoramic of a picture of a town, and it looked real enough that it was a photo taken from real life and then put in the game. I wanted to get a little closer to see if I could see any of the buildings in more detail, so I kept on going. I got close enough that you could really start to identify some of the buildings and I was certain that this was a real place. Let me know down below if you think that you know where this place is or whether it's just a computer generated image of a town. It did kind of look like Scunthorpe and as I got closer the echo of me saying the word Scunthorpe reverberated around and killed me. 
heading back actually underneath the map this time and I found this cool staircase on the, the blue staircase that actually carries on and continues underneath. Once you get to this landing area it continues on downwards and maybe it was used as a secret passageway for a certain family during the war but I've made enough European jokes in this video so I'm going to stay out of it. Having said that I think the Germans should know better than to start a war that the British will inevitably win. I am of course joking but anyway let's move on to the next map. Moving on to the next map, Plain. Now this one is a very, very popular map among the casual community, and I can understand why. You get all your diamond smurfs going into the casual playlist so they can spawn peak and feel better about themselves. It is one of the more iconic maps in the game, and I really like it. Oh boy, I'm really looking forward to Plain. There's so much detail to this map, I really just want to explore. Um, so, now coming into this video, I really thought there was going to be a lot to explore on plane, because there's lots of terminals and gateways that you can see surrounding you on the map. It's quite a unique map being so flat and open, you can see the details surrounding you, whether it's the buildings or the planes or other structures, but unfortunately, I was not able to get close enough without dying. Now Ubisoft must have made the skybox for this map extremely small, which is quite unfortunate because I really was looking forward to this one. Moving on to the third and final map, Hereford, and it's at this point in the video once again where I must ask if you have enjoyed and made it to this point, please do leave a like on the video. It helps me out a bunch as this series has taken me a lot of effort to make. Once again, please do leave your suggestions for other maps you want to see for the next video down in the comments as well. But anyway, Hereford. One of the least popular maps in the game, it's very simple to see why it's so grey and depressing, just like the rest of the UK. It probably takes a close second behind Tower for worst map in the game, but there is still a fair amount of detail to it. It has an interesting design and interesting structures surround it both on the inside and outside, but that in no way excuses it for the awful map that it is. So anyway, for the final time, let's get into it. Starting off at the training ground spawn, if we head out the wall behind us, we can get to these aircraft hangars, with a lot of them standing all in a row. Now if we look behind us, we can see the SAS flag just flying below the Union Jack there on the flagpole, which of course Hereford Base is where the SAS trade. Passing through the hangars now, if we head west and keep heading past, we can get out the other side to these weird mounds with tunnels in them. Now at first I didn't have a clue what these were but upon closer inspection these green columns hanging down below are actually in-game assets. If we take a closer look we can see all the bushes, trees and other smaller assets all hanging up here in a line. Now I don't have a clue why this is there but it was quite an interesting find. If we keep on heading out the map past this force field that the SAS have around Hereford, we can get out into the great British countryside. Now looking up, this is a really nice beautiful day in the UK, and I was very lucky not to get sunburn. And this is classic Tuesday behaviour. I kept on heading through the endless fields until I reached Milton Keynes and instantly died. Please God, never go to Milton Keynes. Starting off once again inside the map by the Spitfire Courtyard, and if we head outside of the map here, we can head over to these two helicopter hangars. Making our way over to the hangar on the left, we can see this lovely military helicopter sitting nicely out of the rain. But if we head over to the right hangar, Unfortunately, this helicopter is not here. I think Kobe borrowed this helicopter, but I haven't heard back from him in a while, so maybe I should go check on him. Now, I wanted to rush off to the shops so I could get some Stellas for me and the boys, but as I was making my way over, I found this field growing lots of vegetables. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to bring myself to stop and take one because they're too good for your teeth, so I ran on past. What made it all even worse is as I was approaching the shop, I was approached by a bunch of roadmen who stabbed me and I died. But anyway, that's going to do it for this episode of Boundary Break. I really hope you guys did enjoy. Please, once again, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel if you're new. Once again, I'll remind you to leave your suggestions for other maps to explore in the next episode. And I'll see you guys later.